Today we'll be looking at the various types of sliders available in WebPlus and how they can benefit your site design. We'll experiment with both horizontal and vertical variants and look at pre-designed sliders as well as creating one from scratch. As we're looking purely at sliders to begin with, then we'll start with a blank site and add a pre-designed slider onto the page. Navigating to the Assets tab and clicking Browse, we will find a sliders category that we can then filter further through subcategories. We have quite a variety to choose from, and these sliders can be purely image-based, text-based, or a combination of both. Let's have a look at a photographic slider to begin with. Within the photo category, we'll choose a landscape slider that has navigation arrows for the user to move back and forth between slides. Click and drag the newly added slider from the Asset Browser to the page. You will see in the Objects panel on the right hand side that the slider has been added and is made up of several components which are panels. These panels contain the individual content for each slide that makes up the slider. Clicking on the slider will change the options available to us in the main design view. You should now see these two arrows, which can be used to preview and also edit the panels. If you have trouble selecting the slider directly, select any element of the slider and click the Select Parent button, shown here. Let's go ahead and import some photographs into the Assets tab that we can then use in the slider. Once they are imported, I can simply click and drag one of the photos onto this first panel. As we are using a pre-designed slider, the image will be positioned to fit into the predetermined frame. Using the Position Image tool, we can move the image around within the frame to choose the composition we want. I'll go ahead now and populate the remaining panels with photographs. The pre-designed sliders come with a certain number of panels, but when we want to add more, the easiest way to do this is to use the Slider Studio. With the slider selected, launch the Slider Studio using the button on the Context Toolbar. Within the Slider Studio, we have the ability to change the slider's behavior. We can change the animation type when changing between panels, choose whether the slider plays automatically, or waits for user intervention, and much more. Of particular interest is the option to detect mouse wheel actions. This will enable the viewer to use the scroll wheel on their mouse to control the slider when their mouse cursor is hovered over it. For now, however, we'll concern ourselves with the Panels tab. This lists the individual panels, and we can see the panels listed that the pre-designed slider has by default. The easiest way to create a new panel that retains the same layout is to duplicate an existing one. Simply select a panel in the list and click on the Copy Slider Panel button. You can do this a number of times until you get as many panels as you require. Having added photographs into each new panel, we can now preview the finished slider. Let's look at some other slider designs. This dynamic slider is very visually appealing and is actually made up of four individual sliders. Hovering your mouse over each slider will cause it to slide out vertically. This is a great way to compact information on a page whilst drawing attention to it. The easiest way to replace the imagery with our own, in this case, would be to click select the image you want to replace, then use either Replace Picture from Assets or Replace Picture from File. You can also click drag an image from the Assets list as well. Previewing the slider, we can see how it's easy to provide key information in an interactive fashion without overwhelming the viewer with lots of text. Let's use a horizontal slider with labels and experiment with the options in Slider Studio. Once the slider is on the page, select it and launch Slider Studio. 
The first thing we will do is check Detect Mouse Wheel Actions, which will allow manual control over the slider using the mouse scroll wheel. Next, we will change the panel loop time so that each panel will stay on the screen longer before transitioning to the next panel. Clicking Preview will allow us to preview the slider without having to exit Slider Studio and use the normal preview function. So we've looked at some different slider designs, but let's look at a blank slider and see how we can populate it. In the blank category of the Assets browser, we'll choose the grey blank slider with the tabs at the top, then drag it onto the page. This particular slider is made up of three panels, so we'll choose the usual Select Parent feature to be able to move between the panels. We'll add an empty picture frame on the first panel. To do this, navigate to the Quick Build tab and hold down Control whilst click dragging a picture frame onto the panel. It's then just a case of resizing it to the desired size, then adding a picture. I'll do this for the remaining two tabs. And once previewed, we can see the tabbed slider working as intended. That's it for now. Do explore the different sliders available and try adapting them for your purposes, as you can find some unique ideas and uses for them. To find out more about Web Plus, see the Learn section of the Startup Assistant. Thank you for watching.